All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We're excited to welcome Dr. Michael Dieter as our speaker today, as he will discuss aerosol mitigation through procedural isolation. Before we get started, we got a couple reminders for you. At any point during the webinar, we certainly encourage your participation. Please type any questions you might have into the Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end of the presentation. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by Ivaclar Vivident. Dr. Dieter, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this uh, nice introduction and welcome, dear colleagues and friends, to this webinar, Aerosol Mitigation Through Procedural Isolation. Um, I will um, go through the presentation. And then, of course, um, we will have some time to answer your questions at the end of this webinar. OK, so this is actually where I'm broadcasting to you now. Um, we're Obviously, this one here is, is Liechtenstein, yeah, the, in the heart of Europe. And you, you have a, a view to the Swiss Alps, to the Swiss mountains here on the other side. And I'm right here in this building here, in the ICDE, International Center for Dental Education. And you can see this is my team. We are the global education clinical team, and we're five dentists and three assistants. And um, in parallel, I'm also practicing private uh, dentistry, just like you do in your offices. And I'm practicing just a few hundred meters away on the Swiss side. Yeah, so everything is, is pretty small here. Okay, cool. So let's jump into, into the topic. Um, um, why is it so important uh, to, 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 to completely isolate or effectively isolate our operatory field? Uh, first of all, of course, we need to have good access and retraction. So that means we need to expose the operative field and we need to retract the lips, the cheeks and the tongue so that we can do our work, of course. Then the second thing is, of course, the moisture control. Um, saliva, blood and salt fluid has nothing to do on, uh, on the teeth that we, we need to work on, especially if we are doing uh, adhesive procedures, because that is really a, a big problem for adhesive dentistry uh, that we all do nowadays. And finally, uh, we need to protect the, the patient, of course, uh, from hazardous substances. We need to um, also uh, protect him from aspiration, swallowing, and also from aerosols. And now, of course, I will cover um, uh, all these points um, today in this webinar. So we can actually subdivide between relative isolation with cotton rolls and suction, so the traditional way. And we also, um, um, we also have, of course, absolute or total isolation available. And I would like to discuss with you today uh, both of these um, types of isolation and uh, give you some hints when it is really necessary to have an absolute isolation and when um, can we do just a relative isolation. So these are actually the three subtopics I would like to discuss today. Uh, first is relative isolation, absolute isolation, and then the third part will be the clinical application because I would like to show you some practical steps, some maybe some good ideas, I hope, uh, how we can um, get this isolation, especially the total isolation done easier. So I would like to start with the first uh, topic, relative isolation. I mean, we are all very familiar with it. And uh, of course, we would like to have the fastest isolation possible to do the job. Uh, and today, of course, I would also would like to introduce to you a very, very helpful tool, it's the Optra gate, um, that helps us actually to be even more efficient when we do relative isolation. Why is relative isolation with OptraGate favorable? And why is it an integral part of my clinic? Uh, you know, the OptraGate really nicely retracts the cheeks, the cheeks and the lips of the patient. So we get very good access to the operatory field. We really see everything uh, directly until the throat, <laughs> ideally. Uh, and why is OptraGate standing out? Of course, because of the design and because of the three-dimensional flexibility that it offers. And um, there's another bonus for the patient because the OptraGate helps the patient to keep the mouth opened. So the, the patient does not need to actively open, but the OptraGate really supports that mouth opening. And of course, this is more relaxing than for the patient, of course. 
So the advantages, and I will show you some examples for that, is with OptraGate, you can do a wide range of clinical applications. So you can virtually do it for every uh, clinical procedure that you are doing. Then, of course, it offers hygienic single packaging, very important. It is latex-free, so it's, it's suitable for every patient, even for the, let's say, allergic um, patients. And, and because of the flexibility, it does offer a good patient comfort. Here you see, um, um, let's say, the areas of application. And you can see it's really a wide range from dental checkup to direct restorations to prosthetics. When you want to take an impression, it is very helpful for orthodontics, for professional care, you know, for, let's say, oral health management, professional tooth cleaning here, especially for the assistant or the dental hygienist, then for any kind of bleaching procedures, digital dentistry, and pediatric dentistry as well. And you can see here, um, um, with uh, today nowadays, of course, a lot of us are intraoral scanning. And um, for this, it really, really offers extremely good access. Also for the buckle scan, when you need to align upper and lower, uh, you have very, very good access with the Optra gate. So um, you can now compare the left picture the traditional way where the assistant is holding the cheeks, the cheeks and the lips away with a mirror. And on the right hand side, you can see how uh, the mirror here is only for viewing here, but it's not holding any cheeks and lips. And so uh, some people call it uh, an additional assistant. It's like having an additional assistant, but without obstructing the view. You simply have less tools inside the patient's mouth. And that, of course, offers a lot of advantages for you uh, as, a, as an operator. So now you see how we, we actually um, hold this. Um, we hold the Optra gate with three fingers and then we insert it in the patient's mouth. You can see that is a very quick one without any mirror with one hand only. Okay, and I show you this step-by-step step a little bit slower, but you can see within a few seconds, you actually have applied the Optra gate. Okay, so you probably have noticed that the Optra gate is really, really flexible. And it consists of two rings that are connected with a very soft latex free material. Uh, in the next video, um, this is done very easily and very slowly. So you hold the Optra gate, you insert it on one side of the corner of the patient's mouth, then on the contralateral corner. And now the patient is slightly closing to relax the upper lip because now you need to slide the inner ring behind the upper lip into the vestibule. This is how it's sliding in. And we need to do the same thing just in the lower jaw. So the patient again is relaxing, slightly closing so that the lip is relaxed. And now you can see how the, the inner ring is slightly and easily sliding um, into the vestibule. Okay, so this is, this is how it is, okay? You can see the inner ring is a little thicker and it's wrapped with a very soft material. And the outer ring here, that one, that one here is, is thinner. And this is how it is applied in the patient's mouth. You can see, like this, and I put this on our shelf on. This is how it should, it's a, uh, a good seat, yeah, so you can do anything. You can take a, a ride also, and you can still talk. For some people, it might be a disadvantage, but then you need to have a, a total isolation. Okay, and um, you can see here, um, this is also suitable for children. The Optra gate is very suitable also for pediatric dentistry, as you can see here. You have very, very good access also uh, because with children don't like when you when you really uh, you know um, tear the, the 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 cheeks with the with a with a mirror. So um, the Optra gate offers a very good alternative also here. Um, and here are the three sizes that are offered with Optra gate. So the regular one was the one that I just applied on myself. So I would say as a rule of thumb for men, you would you would take a regular one. And for women, you would take a small one, but it depends on the woman, of course. <laughs> and then for children, we offer this uh, junior 
size and you it's also available in in different colors also by the way when you when you're dealing with children and and you ask them would you like to have a blue one or a pink one uh, of course this is pretty much gender related as you know but it's breaking the ice and instead of crying and uh, thinking about how fearful they are they are dealing now with what color should they should they choose and you show them this little thing and so it's really a great icebreaker so how do you select the correct size? You can see on every object gate, there is kind of a gauge here. Okay, so if, if, um, if and you, you actually measure it, this, you hold it in front of the patient's lip. And uh, so the, the distance between one to the other corner of the mouth is then the thing that you need to compare it on your gauge. For example, this woman um, has this distance here and it would correspond to the small size. And of course, if you have a man, it probably has a bigger or a larger uh, mouth, and then you would you would you would use um, the the regular one. And of course, for for children, of course, the smallest size. So, did you know that every two and a half seconds, somewhere in this world, a dentist is somewhere inserting an optra gate? So this is uh, some very um, uh, interesting news, because the optra gate actually. Uh, is, is getting more and more popularity among dentists, and it even made it to the, to the news. And you can see here um, in the, in the townie news here, you know, it's, of course, you, 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 you heard it already. And I'm talk, talking like this, this new work clothes, ensures adequate relative isolation. Ultracade is counseled to wear, assist patients in keeping the mouth open, soft, flexible, and latex free. Sorry, we we have some we had some troubles to 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 uh, transfer the original sound, but uh, what I want to say is you can still communicate with the patient, and if you would take a if you want to take a bite, you can do so because it's also not interfering with a bite with the occlusion, right? Okay, good. So I hope. You could see that the Optrogate is a really great addition to relative isolation, and it, might, it, makes, it makes your life easier, and it's also very comfortable for the patient. Okay, so let's switch to, let's switch to absolute or total isolation. Uh, let's talk about rubber dam. And you know the rubber dam um, has been, let's say, invented by, by a New York dentist. His name was Sanford Barnum when he introduced this um, to his fellow colleagues already in, in 1864. So that means one, more than 100 years uh, of history of rubber dam, uh, which is a very good idea because it really offers a completely dry operatory field. It really protects the patient from aspiration ingestion. And it also, um, of course, offers um, some, good, some control over the spread of aerosol and of course of uh, viruses. Yeah, the question is, and I would like to clarify that with you, um, is that a time killer? Do we actually um, spend more time with a rubber dam or can we even reduce the operative time? And what about the stress onto, or for us and especially for the patient? So these are the things I would like to, to clarify now. And I would like to back up what I'm saying here, of course, with uh, scientific studies. So it's not only my opinion, but um, you will see some evidence here as well. So the first thing I would like to look at is, um, is rubber dam actually prolonging the longevity of direct restorations? Because, you know, if you don't have any contamination, you have, of course, the best possible prerequisite for a, for a perfect performance. Or the other way around, if you have a contamination on the tooth by saliva, blood, and sulcus fluid, there is extremely high chance that the bond of your bonding agent is failing. And that's why um, it's always a good idea um, if we really, really um, isolate nicely. Uh, and of course, there are not so many uh, studies um, that are really showing a clear evidence that with a rubber dam, we have a better outcome, a better quality of our direct restorations compared to relative isolation. Only this study here shows some low quality evidence that the rubber dam usage um, in dental direct restorative treatments may, may, may lead to a lower failure rate of the restoration. Uh, it's not a very strong evidence here. And if you look at, at a lot of other studies, 
they don't find a significant difference between rubber dam isolation and relative isolation with cotton rolls with our on the outcome of our direct restorative uh, restorations. So we can actually conclude that proper isolation is extremely important, but and it's even more important than the method of isolation. In other words, if we take care and, and really isolate everything um, so that we don't have a contamination, we can be as good as with the rubber dam isolation. So I think it is good news uh, for us. Um, what about the longevity of root canal treatment? So um, here, of course, the situation is very different because with uh, root canal treatment, we have a much, much better outcome if we use a rubber dam. You can see um, this one here shows a much higher survival rate after root canal treatment compared to uh, cotton roll isolation. So rubber dam usage always improves the outcome of endodontic treatments. And that's why, of course, all the, let's say, endodontic societies worldwide, they're actually uh, recommending the use of rubber dam, such as the uh, American Association of Endodontists. They are stating in their position statement on dental dams that Tooth isolation using the dental dam is the standard of care. It is really important or essential for any non-surgical endodontic treatment. So, and this is just um, the American Association. And of course, uh, in Europe, we have the same thing. We have the European Society of Endodontology. And they also say that uh, root canal treatment procedures should only be carried out when the tooth is isolated by a rubber dam. But the reality, of course, you can imagine is, uh, is different. Yeah, not every dentist is using rubber dam, for example, in the US. And this is a study uh, from the National Dental Practice-Based Research Network, as you can see here. Uh, only 47% of uh, GPs are actually using a rubber dam when they're doing uh, a root canal treatment. So half-half in the US, according to this study. Okay. Um, what about the aspiration ingestion control? I mean, of course, you can imagine if you are dealing with, uh, let's say, root canal files, uh, of course, uh, if you don't protect the patient, they will, they will hang somewhere here or even in the lungs. And of course, this is a very uh, severe medical emergency and you have to rush the patient to the hospital. And that's a really, really uh, uh, a severe um, problem. Yeah, so I mean, not only for the patient, but also for you, maybe because of the legal consequences from that. Uh, and even if you just uh, remove an amalgam filling um, and you have these uh, these fragments, yeah, and you remove that, of course, um, I'm always using rubber dam for that uh, because, and I'm communicating that right because I want to protect the patient. I'm telling the patient I'm doing some extra care for him here, and this is always. A, pretty much um, appreciated by the patient. Okay, now uh, today's topic is of course, uh, aerosol mitigation. And of course, now we come to that point uh, with the aerosol control with the rubber dam. Is it really helpful? Um, first of all, of course, you know, um, the, the spread, of course, the transmission routes of COVID-19. Uh, and you know, of course, you have the infected patients, of course, then for the distance here, very small particles, less than five microns. We're talking about aerosols, but we also have droplets and spatter, of course. And of course, those droplets, of course, you can directly inhale that. But of course, it can also, let's say, sit on, on objects. And then you have that fomite transition. That's, of course, why we need to disinfect everything. But of course, um, today we talk about the aerosols. And, um, and of course, uh, aerosols are uh, predominantly in the, in the pharynx, yeah, in the, in, the, in the deeper part of the throat. But of course, they are also in the patient's saliva. So in, in, in one milliliter, milliliter of saliva, we can find about more than one million viral particles inside. So. It is a significant, um, um, it could be a potential problem, let's put it like this. Uh, and so um, there was an interesting article in the New York Times last year, and they have actually looked at um, different um, jobs or different groups with different jobs, uh, as you can see here. Um, and of course they have looked at the exposure to the disease, but also to the physical proximity 
uh, to the potential infected um, uh, source. Uh, and you, you, could, you probably can guess uh, who has the potential highest or the highest potential risk. It's us, right? It's us, it's dentists, and of course, the, our dental personnel that help us in the dental clinic. So uh, it makes sense really to, 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 to make sure we protect ourselves, but of course, we also need to protect our personnel and of course, the patient. And so what role is rubber dam playing here? Um, you know, um, in those days when we, have, when we had other, uh, let's, say, let's say, big diseases, predominating like AIDS or HIV and hepatitis. Of course, those days we had already some studies looking at the efficiency of the rubber dam to prevent that. And then all of, all of these studies here, you can see those from the, from the let's say, end of the 80s. Uh, you can see there, they were quite uh, effective uh, as a barrier in, in order to contain the viral spread. Um, if you look at uh, some recent studies, and that one is a really, really recent study, I'll say uh, a relevant study uh, from um, the area in China where the virus has, is originating or has originated. Uh, and uh, they come to the conclusion here that the use of rubber dam can significantly minimize the production of saliva and blood contaminated aerosol or spatter, especially in the clinic when we are um, working with high speed hand pieces. So, in, in in, in another study, they have actually um, clearly could show a significant reduction in microorganisms of up to 99% with the use of rubber dam. And that's why they conclude that this is an excellent barrier to the potential spread of infectious diseases in the dental office, right? So, um, and, and there are more study like this. I don't want to bore you with too many studies here, but it's very clear that with the rubber dam, we are really, really on the safe side, especially in this pandemic situation. Um, but of course, um, what you should really do in the dental clinic, of course, we, we need to, let's say, approach our own national dental association. And that's, of course, the recommendation by the FDI, right? By the World Dental Federation. So we need to ask, our local or dental or national dental association, how to proceed. Now, I'm working in Switzerland. I'm practicing in Switzerland. So I need to uh, approach or have a look on the guideline of the Swiss um, Dental Association. And this is how it is. Okay, this is in German, but uh, <laughs> don't, you don't need to read that. But this is the guideline. And it says, I should do a treatment with rubber dam whenever possible. So that's a very clear statement. Whenever possible, I need to apply a rubber dam and I'm doing that. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, rubber dam is not accepted by everyone because um, most of the, let's say, arguments against um, rubber dam would be, uh, it's too complicated, it's uh, too time consuming, right? It takes too much time. Uh, and the question is, um, what does the, have, do we have a study here? Of course, I will show you the step-by-step -step procedure and the, the time it needs really to apply the rubber dam. But here you can see uh, in this study, they have actually with different rubber dam systems, of course, um, also conventional rubber dam systems, they have actually isolated uh, an upper lower molar. And they have actually calculated the placement time. You can see the, the, the preparation time and the removal time. I would say the important thing is the placement time, yeah? Um, because preparation time, of course, uh, it can be already prepared and removal time, you can see is not really significant. But you can see the placement, the average placement time, and here they have used the Optradam Plus also, uh, is 115 seconds. So it's actually less than two minutes. So the time needed for rubber dam placement was between one and two minutes. And they have concluded that the rubber dam does not significantly prolong the overall treatment time. Um, why? Okay, that's the application. But then Gordon Christensen made a very, very nice statement in the 90s already. Um, he says, with the rubber dam, the procedure time is significantly reduced. Patients cannot talk. And you probably have a, some of your patients probably are also quite talkative, at least 
some of mine are, they cannot cough and they cannot ex um, expect to rate. Because if, if, you have to, if you have to drive them up and down and up and down, some of them, they only want to rinse. I don't know for, for what. Sometimes there is no necessity really to rinse, but they feel they have to rinse off every few minutes. And, and of course, if you have a rubber dam on, that is solved that problem. <laughs> okay, but interesting is um, um, Gordon, Gordon Christensen, he estimated that there will be time savings or there are time savings of up to 50% on many clinical procedures with the usage of a rubber dam. And that's quite, quite big, right? So you have, we have to invest a few minutes. I would say it's say two or three or five minutes, yeah, uh, maximum. And then the time that you save afterwards is significant, right? Because you, you can really do your job. You don't have to wait. You don't have to interrupt uh, your treatment, but you can really streamline and, um, let's say, really uh, speed up your treatment. So I would like to show you a little survey that have been done a few years ago uh, with German dentists. So they have been asked, why don't you personally regularly use rubber dam for composite fillings or adhesively looted restorations? And they said, it's not necessary. Okay, we can argue. I've shown you. Uh, you can also isolate nicely with relative isolation if you are very careful. They said it takes too long. Well, uh, I don't think so. That uh, two minutes is it's pretty long. I think it's fine. It's too expensive. Okay. Uh, if they think about the material cost, but the other thing is what is the most expensive factor in the clinic? It's actually the time, the chair side time, the, the time that we need to, to do our job. That is the most um, significant um, money factor or, or, yeah, or, or the most uh, expensive thing. And if we can cut down the, the time here, we're actually gaining. So it, it, it's actually cheaper in the end. Then, um, of course, you can see it's too complicated. Yeah, some, sometimes uh, rubber dam can be complicated. And there's one thing which, which I'm very, very interested in. Um, the patient rejects the rubber dam. There is a question. Do you think so? I mean, what's your opinion? Because if the patient really rejects the rubber dam, I will not use it because I will not do something that the patient dislikes. It's not very good because I see the patient as a customer, actually. So that's why I would like to clarify the patient acceptance of, of rubber dam. And we actually, we know from numerous studies, but the, they are older studies. You can see there from the 80s and 90s uh, that actually patients are very positive towards the rubber dam. In, in some studies, they even ask uh, if they had a good experience with it, that they can get the rubber dam again the next, the next time when they come for treatment. But I would like to show you a more recent study here. Um, and, and here, let's say almost 61% uh, reported that the use of rubber dam is comfortable and pleasant. But the researchers also said that it, it makes sense to explain the patient what you're doing and why you are doing it. Because then they're really, really happy with that. If you just throw in something that they don't know, of course, there might be the fear or they don't know what, what's going on, of course. Um, but that's a study. Uh, you can see that one is a randomized controlled clinical study from Switzerland, where they actually have treated children and adolescents with um, fissure sealing. But what they did is they wanted to see what about the stress level of the patient. And they have actually measured that with the breath rate and the skin resistance level and also the pain perception. And you can see the breath rate was lower, skin resistance level was higher during the treatment with a rubber dam uh, compared to uh, cotton roll isolation. So that means that the stress was less. So compared to cotton roll isolation, patient felt more uh, relaxed. They, they felt less stress compared to the standard um, cotton ball isolation. So, and that's really good. I mean, that's what we need, right? We want patients to feel good and relaxed and happy in our chair. And there was a side effect. The treatment time that was needed with, for the fissure ceilings was 12% less with the rubber dam. So there was actually, and that, that is not the guessing, that is a real, let's say, a, a, an outcome. Um, that there's a time saving actually with a rubber dam. 
So I would like to conclude here. When we talk about the patient's rubber dam acceptance is that, I mean, the, the attitude of our patients towards rubber dam is much more positive than we usually think it is. So we should not be afraid. We should use this as a marketing tool. I mean, for, for certain indications where you really want to use a rubber dam, you, say, you tell your patient, look, I have something special for you. And that's only for you. And it helps you in this and this and this. It's more secure. It will increase the quality and so on. So all the good things you, are, you mentioned and the patient will be happy because they will appreciate um, your care. Good. But still, of course, there is some basic problem with a conventional rubber dam. What is that? The problem is our mouth is a three-dimensional cave, right? But this, the standard rubber dam is a two-dimensional sheet of rubber so it's the design does not match right and and the the result is that you have really outward tension and it's really difficult to control this tension and that's why we always need to use clamps here there's there's no way out of we really need to, to use multiple clamps sometimes so we have this outward tension here because of the wrong design of of the rubber dam so now in this Last section of my webinar, I would like to show you the clinical application and, of course, some, some new technologies here with the rubber dam generally. So you have already seen the Optra gate, right? I told you that the Optra gate has two rings, one inner ring and one outer ring, which are connected by a very soft material. Now, the Optra dam plus also has these two rings, but of course, on one side is completely closed because now we want to have an, an absolute or total isolation. So the basic principle of the two, uh, Optragate and Optradam is, is quite similar. Um, um, so what, what does it offer? Optradam Plus here really adjusts nicely to the patient's anatomy and uh, with the intraoral ring, okay, with, with uh, this ring here, uh, we have a completely nicely, let's say, secured uh, fixation in the patient's vestibule. Okay, so what are the basic differences? You know it. Uh, the Optrogate offers nice perioral retraction, so you have very good access, and it offers relative isolation in combination with cotton rolls and suction. But then the Optradem Plus offers, of course, also very nice retraction, but also absolute isolation. So what, what are the, the benefits when you use Optradam Plus? Of course, like Optragate, it also offers three-dimensional flexibility. So it's really a three-dimensional thing or a three-dimensional mouth, and that reduces the outward tension. And that's why it offers very fast and easy placement, even by one person. The frame is already integrated, right? You don't need an extra frame. You can isolate both arches simultaneously. That's also a nice thing. And clamps are not needed in many cases. And I'll show you which cases these are. So let's have a little bit, a look on the design, right? Um, we don't have this outward tension that we have with a conventional rubber dam. Instead of this, oh, sorry. <laughs> Instead of this, we have some vertical tension. So it has a vertical tension into the vestibulum and into the sulcus of the patient in the upper. And the same thing in the lower. So the Optra dam is pushed exactly in the, in the direction that we need, that we want, not outside the patient's mouth, but upper in the, in the, in the let's say, upper direction in the upper, um, um, in the upper jaw and lower in the lower jaw. So that's why um, um, it's easier to place, easier to handle. It offers very good patient comfort. It's easy to keep the mouth open very similar to the Optra gate, and there is a reduced need for clamps. And you can see here what a nice overview you have here. And that's just an anterior uh, isolation without any clamps. So for the anterior, you don't need any clamp. The only thing you, you might wish to use is one of those uh, wet jets, you know, these uh, elastic rubber cords that you can tear, they get thin, you go on a contact point, you release it, and it, it, it holds your rubber dam or optra dam in place. And you get very, very nice, um, um, let's say isolation also in the, in the interproximal. 
Let's talk about the, the performance of Optra Dam uh, regarding the aerosol containment or aerosol uh, uh, control. And uh, I told you there are two rings. One ring is inside the vestibule, so it's actually sealing inside the patient's mouth. And the outer ring here is actually sealing the outside here uh, of the patient's mouth here in the 300 degrees, um, um, yeah, all around, so periorally. So you have a two-fold, double-fold sealing, actually, that holds back um, the aerosol, the inner ring in the vestibulum, and the outer ring, as you can see here. And of course, this is a huge advantage for effective aerosol control. So, so all the viruses, they, they actually almost have no chance to escape here through the oral cavity. And that's exactly what we need. That's what we need now, not only for COVID-19, but also if you have, if you have other uh, infectious diseases like hepatitis C or D, where, you, where also that are very, very uh, infectious diseases, this helps you a lot. Okay. So just before we come, I would like to show you a few application videos, how to, to apply that. Uh, one, one advantage is, of course, also that there is no disinfection necessary because we have a hygienic single packaging. Uh, a lot of these uh, standard rubber dams, you have to isolate the single sheets here. So that's additional work that you don't need. You just take it off and you're ready to go. Okay. So, of course, when the patient comes in, uh, we will... Um, explain to the patient and show him about the Optra dam, right? That, what we, that we want to apply this and show him how flexible it is, how it works. So the patient becomes quite interested. You can see how flexible that is. And then of course, we need to select the size. We have two sizes, a regular and a small one. And for her, in this case, it was a small one. And then, of course, the assistant uh, can prepare the Optra Dam. You can see that's the, the pre-stamping. You can see the upper jaw is stamped here in the lower jaw. And you just select the teeth that you need to isolate. And then you can just uh, punch those holes with that metal plunger. For a conventional rubber dam, you always need to have this frame. And here, we don't need to have that frame. So we take out uh, the Optra Dam. And we select the size of, this, of these holes on that plunger, right? And now we can directly punch those holes inside. Um, when you, now what we'll do here is we will select a, a lower molar. And for a molar, I would recommend to you to, to use a clamp and to pre-mount that clamp inside the Optra Dam because it's much easier and faster, right? So now this is pre-mounted. You grab the inner ring with the three fingers, as I showed you before. Okay, I show you, I have one here. So you have that closed, the closed area goes onto the patient in the direction. And now you take three fingers and you grab, you grab this, this inner ring with the uh, middle finger. You take the thumb and and grab this inner ring, right? And you compress it and you use the index finger to rest it, okay? So you hold it like this, you hold it like an impression tray. And now we go to the patient and we will now insert, like you do with the, with the Optra gate, it's exactly the same. You go in one side first, you have these little, let's say, wings here, on one side of the corner, um, one, one corner of the mouth first, then on the contralateral and then upper and lower lip. And that's it. Let me show you how quickly we can do this. So you hold it like that, and you can see the clamp is already inside that Optra dam, okay? Now the patient is slightly closing so that you can slide this inner ring behind the lip. And that's it, right? So that takes a few seconds. Then you grab the clamp with the forceps and just push it over the molar that you need to isolate. And then, of course, the next step will be you take a, you take a spatula and you just flip over um, this, this rubber here uh, from the clamp on both sides, the buckle and the lingual side, and then you have done the isolation. So the single molar isolation, that's, that's pretty easy. 
For the anterior, of course, you do it in the same way. One side first, one side of the corner, then the other corner. Patient is slightly closing to relax the lips. That's important. And now you can slide the inner ring behind the upper and the lower lip. And that's it, right? Then, of course, next step will be to, to uh, go with the holes over the tooth. Of course, here, um, your assistant can help you with some floss to go over the contact point. In this case, we will not use a clamp for the anterior. But there's, if you want to do an, a ligature, that's, of course, optional. Right? So you can see here, I will show you this in the, in the big picture and explain why. So if you use wet jets or ligatures, um, that's optional. You don't have to do it, but you can. Of course, it makes your life easier. Uh, there's also another technique called the inversion technique. Uh, you're actually inverting um, the rubber dam into the sulcus. Let me show you a video here. You can see that's exactly after the application. This is how it is normally. And then you just take um, the spatula and invert this area here into the sulcus, right? Right. So here it is not, not inverted. So that's how, how it looks like when you apply it and do nothing. And this is how it looks like when you invert this, this Optra Dam. So again, here, I would like to show you. When you apply this here, for example, that's the normal situation without doing anything. You just go over with the optradem over the contact point. And in many cases, that's really enough because if you want to do something on this worn incisor ledge here, or you want to do a class three here, you don't need to use any ligature or something. You just go ahead like this. But of course, if you want to do like a class five restoration, then you would then need to have an extra deep retraction with the optradem, and then you would use a ligature. And then, of course, I find the wedges quite helpful to, to keep the um, to keep the optradem in place. But in many cases, you don't even need a wedge yet because of that uh, favorable um, direction of insertion. Okay, so let me repeat. For the anterior uh, isolation, you don't need any clamp. And in, main, in most of the cases, for the premolars, you also don't need a, a clamp, all right? So you, you can just go ahead with some wet jets. That's it. But for the, for the molars, they're really like a second, first or second molar or so, then, of course, I would recommend a clamp. There are some specialists who can do it without clamps, but then you need more time. So the easiest thing here is to use one clamp. You don't need two clamps, only one clamp. And you can see you can pre-mount it, and then you're really, really quick. OK, sometimes I have some uh, patients who are um, thinking, who, who, who tell me, um, if you, OK, rubber dam is OK, but the problem is I'm, I'm breathing not through the nose. I'm breathing through the mouth, right? Um, and then you say, it's no problem. Uh, you make just, you cut with a scissor, you cut a hole here in the, in the pellet, palatal area here. And then you, the patient can breathe through that. And you can also uh, uh, maybe do some suctioning because some, some patients, they say, oh, I have some saliva. And then, of course, you can, you can just uh, solve that problem through here. So you are also quite flexible with the Optra Dam. Now, removing the Optra Dam goes like this. You just grab the, the cl um, that clamp, right? And then before you, you, now you don't tear it off, right? Because then you will splatter, right? So you just cut those septums here this area that has been over the contact point so that everything is loose. And then elegantly, you take, you take, a, you take a tissue, right? And then you, you can take everything out um, with a tissue, for example. And then everything is clean. Okay. In the anterior, of course, before you remove it, it's uh, advisable to remove the ligatures first and the wet jets. Right, you also need to cut those septums here because you, you want to make sure that you don't have any splatter or, or really, you know, stuff going through the air. And then you can see with that tissue, you can really, it's very clean, right? It's very nice. So um, the Optra Dam really, really is a, is a great invention because of the three-dimensional design, basically. 
So let me conclude um, um, today's webinar. I think we, we have seen that the isolation impacts the quality uh, of uh, root canal treatments. So here, rubber dam is really mandatory. But for direct restorations, there's no, in the studies, no clear difference. You can also um, uh, do some relative isolation. Uh, if, if you do that correctly, then you have a, a very good prerequisite for a nice uh, uh, clinical outcome. Uh, as I said before here, right? No significant difference between isolation types. And I think, and I'm using this now for, for uh, I don't know for how many years, um, Optragate is a great addition, in my opinion, to conventional relative isolation because you can just throw it in. You have perfect view. The patient feels good. And it's, it's just making your life easier in the clinic. And then the Optra Dam Plus is very easy and fast to apply um, because of the flexibility. Um, it can be used without clamps for anterior isolation. I personally also don't use any clamps for premolars. I only use it for molars. Then it facilitates also easier mouth opening. This is a very good feedback that I regularly get from my patients. And because of that seal, you have that inner seal and the outer seal, it, the Optra Dam Plus provides the highest level of aerosol control. So the Optra Dam is indeed a very, very effective aerosol barrier, especially in these times of uh, COVID-19. Uh, but I, if you think on the about the future, about other uh, infectious diseases that we also have, uh, it really nicely protects us. That means the dental personal and the patient as well. Okay, so um, you know the Optra Gate and the Optra Dam, they are both part of uh, Ivoclar's uh, Optra uh, line of accessories. So you know there are some polishing systems and also some instruments for, um, for you know, sculpting composites. So some very clever products here in this line. I would like to um, uh, give you a little hint on our Ivoclar Vivident Academy. Because here we have a lot of webinars, not only webinars, but also um, that means live webinars, on-demand webinars, and even virtual workshops. That means uh, really something that Henry Schein is also offering, <laughs> but we also have it here. And we have a lot of videos, you know, this we call it professional tip. So small sequences of videos that show you some nice clinical uh, solutions. So have a look here at Ivoclar vivident.com and you just click on academy and you see a lot of different formats and most of them are offering CE points. Okay, so I would like to thank you very much for attending. It was a pleasure for me, even without seeing you, but I hope one day we meet <laughs> and um, I would maybe ask you for some Q&A. I don't know if you had already submitted some questions. Yes, thank you, Dr. Dieter. We do have some questions. And I must say, if we ever get the opportunity to do a webinar again, I certainly hope you have an Optrigate in your mouth for the entire time, as that would be very amusing. <laughs> that would be hard for you to follow for one hour. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a fun challenge. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, is the op, are the Optrigate or Optradam uncomfortable at all for the patient? No, not, not at all. Actually, the, the feedback is, uh, I mean, uh, let's put it like this. Uh, generally, the feedback is very, very good. That means very, very comfortable because it really supports the mouth opening. So if, especially for longer procedures, the patient feels more relaxed because he does not actively have to uh, open the mouth. So it really, it's, it's, I generally get very good feedback. But there's one exception if there is, uh, let's say, the frenulum. If, if there is the, the insertion of the frenulum is pretty high, then, of course, that frenulum can, even though you can see, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little, um, a little space for the frenulum here in, the, um, in this inner ring. Uh, but still, some patients, but it's really a minority, uh, they, they complain that it, it, the frenulum will interfere with that inner ring. So what you can do here is you can use a cotton roll uh, either cotton roll or some gaze, yeah, or, or you, you can cut, cut the cotton roll in half and then put a little bit of water on the cotton roll, compress it a little bit so it gets a little thin, and then you, 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 put, the, you put that underneath that ring, right? So you actually protect the frenulum in this area here with an additional, um, yeah, with some barrier. Let's put it like this uh, with a cotton roll, yeah? So then, then the, the problem is solved. So generally, um, patients, they like it. 
Uh, let's see. Is it difficult to take an x-ray for endo purposes with the Optradam in? No, that's also not a problem. You, you, can, you can take an, an x-ray. Um, you, you can, um, yeah, for example, what's also possible, you have it on one side and you can also slightly put it out. So then you can actually uh, put the film in here or the, the holder of the film. Um, so there are many ways um, uh, to, to do that. So we are actually doing uh, uh, courses about that also to show different situation scenarios with x-ray taking. Yeah. Cool. So no problem. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we we just had another question asking how do you take an x-ray with the Optradam in place? <laughs> I think you just explained that, but if you have any more tidbits. Yeah, free. I mean, um, let's put it like this. You you can you can actually put the you you either had it have it you leave it completely on, or if you think it is in a way, you can you can also you can also let's say remove it on on partially remove it and put put that put put the let's say the the film behind the 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 Optra Dam. Yeah, it's difficult to explain now here. I don't have uh, uh, any slide here now to to support that. Yeah, I think it's better if we just uh, do this in a workshop. Um, yeah, just to do it hands on, <laughs> which is difficult now, but uh, times are changing soon, especially in you you in the US. <laughs> I think you are quicker than than us regarding the vaccination. Ah, we might be. <laughs> Um, all right, I think we've answered all the questions, so we'll wrap just a little early today. So thank you, Dr. Dieter, for your time today. And of course, thank you to Iva Klar for sponsoring this webinar. If anyone has additional questions about this topic, please feel free to email us at webinars at henryshine.com. Additionally, if anyone is interested in attending future Henry Shine webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars for our upcoming schedule. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you back here on future webinars. Have a great weekend. Take care. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.